Spider-Man, one of the strongest and quickest superheroes alive. A hero whose powers seem so, so unattainable in the real world. But what if I told you his powers aren't as impossible as they seem, and how given the right circumstances and genetic makeup, you could become Spider-Man? Firstly, the first step to becoming Spider-Man is each of you have to decide if you can even handle being bit by a special type of spider that can give you Spider-Man-like abilities. Because guys, I'm not gonna lie, spoiler alert, some of you guys may not even pass the first step. Not even the first step. Since the spider from the Spider-Man movies known as the Arrhenius Oscar Pius doesn't actually exist, I did some digging and found out the actual species behind the spider is a Steododa nobilis. However, unfortunately, this spider in the real world is so, so non-lethal. So if it ever actually came up to us and like maybe bit us while we're in the museum with Gwen Stacy, we'd kind of just go, ouch, ouch, dude, ouch. Ah, we wouldn't be doing like, uh, uh, we wouldn't be doing none of that. But this spider is in the same family line to a much more lethal real life spider that better compares to something we'd actually have to get bit by in the real world to become Spider-Man. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce you the Black Widow. Probably one of the scariest spiders we could ever, ever encounter. If bitten by one of these creatures, its pain can be compared to a deep needle puncture or even an extreme scenario's childbirth. People literally feel like they're going through childbirth being bit by this little thingy right here. This thing makes you feel like your pipe bra. Bah, bah. So obviously the chances of surviving something that hurts this much must be very, very low, right? <laughs> Wrong. Wrong. If you look at the statistics, actually less than 1% of victims from a black widow bite actually die. 1%. Meaning most of you guys watching, most healthy people can survive this bite. But the bad news, as you can see, this AI states those of you that are over 60 plus and entering retirement's home, or those of you that are like 6 years old watching my video right now, you might actually have a reasonable chance of dying to the spider because like your immune system isn't good. So if you're actually one of those people, you can just, yeah, go click off the video. Click off. You're not going to become Spider-Man, buddy. <laughs> Sorry, bud. Sorry. Those of you that are still in the race, you've successfully accomplished the first step of becoming Spider-Man, being able to survive the bite. So now we must address the second step of becoming Spider-Man. Could this bite ever actually theoretically make us Spider-Man? Well, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, yeah. Basically, in the movies, the spider, when it bites Peter, gives off a dose of unique radiation that alters his genetic makeup and allows him to web-sling across the city as a full-grown man. But of course, since this unique radiation doesn't exist in the real world yet, how else could we theoretically make a spider make us Spider-Man? Well, after going back and forth with the most advanced AI system out there for literally days now, literally arguing back and forth. I have no life. I literally argued with a robot for days, sitting down arguing with a computer. I eventually found the most realistic way to become Spider-Man is thanks to genetic modification. The AI further states, theoretically, the venom of a spider contains specific components that interact with human DNA, resulting in genetic modifications and the development of spider-based abilities. So in another way, upon being bitten, the spider's venom would introduce unique genetic material into the human body that activate dormant genes or trigger specific specific mutations within our body. But now, at this point, a lot of you are about to comment, oh my god, this is so unrealistic, he's just blabbering about stuff, how could we combine DNA with something that's so not real? Oh. Let me give you a real life example of how genetic modification actually worked. Yes, a real life case that involved genetic modification in the form of gene therapy. So let's all calm down for a second, let's get personal, and let's talk about 2017. The year the FDA approved a gene therapy called Luxturna. Luxturna was a project that involved injecting a modified virus called the AAV into to the human retina. And this modified virus known as AAV had a corrected gene in it that helped fix retina vision. And ladies and gentlemen, what do you know? What do you know? All the patients with super weak eyesight that were just, oh, I can't see, I can't see. They injected it into their retina and the corrected gene helped fix their retina. They could see a lot, a lot better. Like, it's so crazy, guys. It's almost like gene therapy and actually mutation of gene actually works. Isn't that so crazy? No, no, no. Tell me, isn't that so crazy? Huh? So guys, I know I may sound like a crazy person, but guys, what if we simply just haven't found the right spider yet? The perfect spider with the perfect genetic makeup that once infused with our human makeup can literally turn us into Spider-Man. The perfect spider can make us into Spider-Man. I don't feel like you guys don't understand what I'm saying. We could literally become Spider-Man thanks to the perfect spider if it exists out there somewhere in the world. Oh my, why aren't you guys jumping right now? We could literally become Spider-Man soon. I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of surprised you guys aren't jumping out of your seat. Like, why aren't you jumping right now? Get up and jump now. So so now in step three, let's say you are him. You are made it into step three and you are the one that beats the odds. You feel adventurous one day, so you go and explore a deep cave. Boom, boom, boom. Time to explore a cave with my friends. Boom, boom, boom. And then you wander off and you get into a deeper cave, a very, very strange, mysterious cave. And in that cave, you find the perfect, the perfect type of spider that we're talking about. And miraculously, it jumps onto you, it melts you like a horse, and it bites your neck. And thanks to this theory, you are now officially Spider-Man. So now if we put the superhuman strength from the movies aside, us humans simply 
simply gain the powers of Spider-Man, could we even use them? Like us with our current strength, could we use our strength right now to go web-slinging across the city? Can we go web-sling right now? Well, guys, what do you think? You tell me. What do you think first? Go comment it. What do you think? Yes? No? Let me... Okay, wait, you know what? Just pause. Shut up for a second. <laughs> Not even close. No, no, no. Look at me. Let me be quiet for a second. Not even fucking close. You loser. You're such a pathetic loser. You can't. You can't. You're such a loser, buddy. Now let me explain why you're such a loser and why you can't use Spider-Man abilities as a human. So firstly, when we talk about web swinging, we use the super strong AI and we told it that us as an average 160 pound male, we are web swinging at a hypothetical speed compared to Spider-Man's web swinging speed in the actual movies. So here you can see we just took a random number of 60 miles per hour or around like 130 kilometers per hour. The AI uses the formula for centripetal force where F equals force, M equals mass, V equals velocity, R equals radius of circle motion and then we inputted all our respective values as you can see and we came out with an output force of 51,182.24 newtons of force. Now that number is a big number but most of you don't really know how much force that really is being put on your body so if we convert that to pounds you can see right here that's equivalent to 11,500 pounds of force. That is the amount of force Spider-Man feels when he's going that speed in the movies. I feel like you guys are keeping up with me. 11,000 pounds of force constantly being put on your body while you swing at these speeds. This shocking high amount of pound force on your body would rip you apart in an instant, in an instant, without the superhuman strength Spider-Man has in the movies. For reference, a car crash impact ranges anywhere from 5,000 to 20,000 pounds of force, meaning while you try to save your Gwen Stacy as Spider-Man, it'll feel like you're constantly, constantly getting slammed by heavy motor vehicles. Every second you swing from those ropes, you will feel that 11,000 pounds of force collapsing into your body, into your heart, into your skin. Swing, ah, swing, ah. Uh, like, oh. But guys, wait. Still, just, just wait one second. All hope is still not lost. Sure, we may not be able to swing anywhere near as fast as Spider-Man in the movies, or even as fast as a typical car on the highway, but there still must be a reasonable speed that us humans are strong enough to go at, right? Well, first, let's assume the blanket rule of science that we can safely handle five times our body weight in force. So if we're taking the average 160 pound male, we multiply it by five. That's equal to 800 pounds. We convert that to Newton forces, and that's approximately 3.5 thousand Newton forces that our body can handle. Now using that 3,500 Newton number, we can work backwards with our equation and rearrange this force formula to tell us that acceleration equals force divided by mass. And then putting the equation together, we take that 3,500 Newton force and divide that by 68 kilograms, which is around 150, 160 pounds, and we get 52.34 meters per second squared. And then finally, we also use the final velocity formula and we plug in that 52.34 meters per second squared and we get a final, final velocity number of 10.86 meters per second. That is the speed that we can move at as Spider-Man. And converting this into a number we all understand, us human spiders can move at a speed of 39.1 kilometers per hour. Yes! I'm Spider-Man! I am a slow Spider-Man! I am a very, very slow Spider-Man. Slower than most cars, but I'm Spider-Man at least, right? Like, that's that's kind of what counts? Okay, cool, cool. Because if you guys didn't know, 39.1 kilometers is a little bit slower than the speed cars drive at on a typical residential road. So therefore, any of us humans that became Spider-Man, we would definitely not be fast enough to dodge bullets, save Gwen Stacy, dodge lizard attacks, blah blah blah. But on the brighter side, you won't need a car anymore because you can move almost as fast as a slow car on the roads. So... <laughs> Say bye to that car you have. Say, say bye to the car, car you have. You don't need it now. But now let's quickly touch on something a little bit more promising. Let's talk about a Spider-Man ability that we could very well potentially gain in the near, near future. Wall climbing. Guys, right now, literally right now, it would be possible for us to climb walls like Spider-Man if we were 20 centimeters tall. If we were like this tall and we were all this, we would be able to climb walls. And this is because scientists are already aware of the adhesive technology, which is the microscopic structure on the little feet of the spiders and iguanas that generate intermolecular forces, allowing them to stick to surfaces. So literally today, already, scientists are able to grab these little teeny creatures like spiders, iguanas, grab the little DNA that's attached to their feet and give other creatures of similar size the ability to climb and stick to walls. But unfortunately for me and you, currently, right now, we are just too big. We are too big of humans. In fact, here's a full list on why this type of technology won't apply to humans just yet. But ladies and gentlemen, the key word being yet. 
yet. Because if you focus in on the first point, or basically any of these other points you see here, you'll see a very, very interesting pattern. The pattern being that if we simply advance our technology enough, this theoretical idea is very, very possible. We simply have to find a way to duplicate the structure within already existing wall crumbing creatures and somehow turn that teeny tiny DNA structure within these little spiders and iguanas into a full grown human form version. Yeah, okay, see, I, I didn't say it would be easy. I don't want to see any comments, oh my god, Kosho, that's so unrealistic, it's so far away. I never said it would be easy. The title is if we can become a Spider-Man and the answer is yes. I never said, oh, it's gonna be so easy. I didn't say that. So yeah, if you want to comment it's unrealistic, go ahead. But the rest of us that are actually going to become Spider-Man in the near future, let's quickly vibe out to some Spider-Man. Okay.